I've got some exciting news. The WPT has given me a bunch of golden passports into their huge $5 million free roll that goes on on December 13th at the win. This is a live tournament and it is a free roll. Each seat's worth $2,500. All you have to do to qualify to get into the drawing where I'll be giving away some of these golden passports is go to Club wptgold.com clubwptgold.com and sign up using the code BART. More information about that in the description. Hello, John. You're up last. Hi, BART. Thanks for having me. How's it going? Where are you calling out of? I am in San Francisco, California. Okay. Is this at like Lucky Chances or something? Or This, this was at Lucky Chances, yes. And what's the size of the game? Uh, this is a 5, 10, 20. They game. play that big there at Lucky Chances? Once a week. Oh, okay. So 5, 10, 20. And what's the setup? Is it uncapped or? Uh, it's uncapped. All right. So 5, 10, 20, lucky chances. Biggest game, one time per week. Whether that brings in like the best players in the area, I don't know. Is it, is it, I mean, you've got Matrix and you've got Bay 101, which are in San Jose. Do you see people like come up to play in this game, like special? Yes, I see. I see some of the same people. Okay. And how deep are you? I'm 5,650 effective. I cover the table. I have about 11,000. 5,650 effective. You have 11,000. How much did you buy in for the game for? Uh, 7,5. Okay, so you like to cover the table. Yeah. Okay. All right, start us off. Sure. So uh, the villain in this hand, he opens to 60 uh, in middle position. All right, so MP to 60. Is that the standard open size? Yeah, this is the standard at this game. Okay. And uh, the next two players in the low jack and the hijack call the 60. Low jack and hijack call. Okay. Yep. I'm in the small blind and I have queen of hearts and queen of clubs. Queen of hearts, queen of clubs. Okay. Yep. I three bet to 320. So three bet to 320, which is 4x, just under 4x plus the dead money. So 4x plus the dead money or the dead calls would be what? 360. So you want a little bit less than that to 320. Okay. Yep, and then the uh, original opener from middle position, he 4-bet me to 850. 850? Yes. And the other guys folded? Yep, the other two guys folded, and uh, I ended up calling. So, MP to, four f- MP to 850, the other two guys fold out. It's a 4-bet pot, you're playing fairly deep. I mean, it's, what, 300, just under 300 big blinds. I mean, I think, sure, this would be a call like in most types of types of setups with with queen queen a couple comments here is is that uh, uh, if the mp player is aware or good or sort of knows how to play he's going to be wider with a four bet here than what would have been just him opening in u3 betting and that's because of the people that have called to his left so you always have to keep that in mind that this might be wider than your typical four bet ish type of ring he's incentivized to four bet to drive those people out like if he had ace five suited or even like ace queen or something like that right you know, he wants to drive those other people out and get it heads up hero calls now do you if you're typically playing in this game i don't know how often this particular setup happens but like would you have a five bet range here you know, I, I, I did before where I five bet uh, aces and uh, everyone folded. So I think now <laughs> I might uh, just not, not do that. <laughs> <laughs> you feel five bet folded and everyone folded. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Once you get past the four bet in live poker, it, it, it starts to get kind of strange. It's, it's very hard to balance a five bet range that's not just all aces. Maybe sometimes that doesn't matter. But anyways, four bet pot, it looks like the pot is like 18, 20. Plus, I guess the blind, 18 blind, yeah, 1850 plus the blinds, and you're out of position in the small blind with queen, queen. Okay, on to the flop. Yeah, uh, so the flop is nine of clubs, two of hearts, five of clubs. Nine of clubs, two of hearts, five of clubs. So you get a ragged board here. You, you have the queen of clubs in your hand too? Yes. Okay. I check uh, out of position, mm-hmm. and the villain checks back. Okay, so it goes check, check. And it remains 1850. That's interesting because, I mean, if I put myself, I mean, this is a board that should almost always be C-bet, right? <laughs> it's a four-bet pot. It's one of these textures. Again, you're supposed to be doing a lot of C-betting anyways in four-bet pots. You would think it's almost like a 100% type of bet for 
kind of small sizing. He doesn't need to really build the pot up. So it's a little interesting that it goes check, check. And then, you know, you don't, re I mean, I guess with aces, sometimes like the, the, the thing with aces, if you're your opponent is not only do you, have, do you not need protection with aces on boards like this, I, I suppose you can make a case that it cuts down on the, you having ace high calls that you would make like, you know, ace high with two over cards. If you have two, if your opponent has two aces, whereas with Kings, you know, you can call with a lot of ace highs. I mean, you would, but I would, it's, it's still a little strange right off the bat that he's not betting. Don't you think? Yeah. I felt uh, weird about that. Yeah. All right. So 1850 to the turn. Yeah. So the turn is the, uh, the five of spades and I decide to bet here. So I bet really small. I bet 500. So did you consider checking because you thought this was so strange anyways? I did not consider checking. I thought my thought process was I should start betting in case he has a flush draw or ace king that didn't bet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, maybe that was flawed. I, I decided to just lead. No, it's just, it's one of these things where when something very, very unexpected happens, which I think the flop check back here is somewhat unexpected. Some people are saying he might have a lot of ace five suited, which is, would make trip fives, but. I mean, this is less of a chance that that comes out when the, when the five comes. When something unexpected happens here on the flop, sometimes on the turn, you, you're like, hmm, what is going on here? I mean, obviously, like, if you check the turn and went check, check, then you'd obviously have a very easy river value bet here. I'm not saying that I would check the turn. I just wondered if it sort of crossed your mind. Now, your sizing here is such that it's very small. And I guess my question would be, could you bet if you are, if he, that type of range that you were talking about that he didn't bet, I don't know why he wouldn't necessarily bet a flush draw on a four bet pot though, even for small, if you're supposed to be bet anything anyways, but a flush draw or ace king, wouldn't those hands call a little bit of a larger bet on the turn? Yeah, maybe they would. Okay. Hero bets 500 and... yeah. To my surprise, the uh, the villain raised me uh, to 1,200. Oh, that's interesting. Well, so hero bets 500 in a four bet pot, very small. MP now start to raise to 1,200, which you're like, okay, what is this? And normally you'd think, did this guy check back aces here? Or did he check back kings? Does he have a five? Does he have ace five suited, that primary bluff type of holding here? And now he's raising. But then, and then, it, but, but now it's like the pot's what, 2350? It's 35 and change, 700 for you to call. You're getting five to one here. It's really, I mean, you can't just fold now, right? I mean, that's, that would seem kind of ludicrous. The, and then what is the MP? Does the MP have any, what, what would, what would a block, what does he have any stop raises? Like, like a raise with like tens or jacks or something. And then he's going to check it behind. I mean, I would call for sure. I don't know what's going on here, to be honest with you, uh, John, you, you might not have known either, but. I did end up calling because it was just a 700 more in the pot size. So hero calls. Yeah. Yeah. The pot is uh, what? 4250 now. Yeah, forty two fifty, and you you guys have what like uh, what like thirty six and change left or something. Yep. Yep. So the um yeah the the river is the three of clubs. The three of clubs. So the front door comes in. Ace four comes in. Okay. I assume you check. I check. Um, and then villain jams. Oh. Thirty six hundred. For thirty six hundred. So do we, do we know it? I mean, does your combo tell us necessarily anything? Well, I mean, you've got a club in your hand, which means that if you were sort of trying to choose like what combo of Queens to call with, you would want to have a club in your hand just because it makes it less likely that your opponent has a flush a little bit less likely in a given spot. You're losing to ace five. If he had like aces with the ace of clubs, he could play it this way. 
And then what are the bluffs? So the thing that comes out at like, so it's just kind of weird, like ace king, like with the ace of clubs, does that hand need to start raising turn or does it have enough showdown value to just call? I mean, that was one of the things that actually crossed my mind that I didn't say on the turn was like, could it ever be like some sort of like, it's just weird though. Cause like, if you're not folding Queens, what's the point of him raising ace king? Unless he was just going to jam like any river. Like, has anybody seen somebody play ace king this way where they raise it up on the turn blocking aces and kings and they're trying to rep like they have aces and kings and they play it like a, like kind of like a semi bluff. He's got the ace of clubs and now he jams. I mean, if he played it ace king with the ace of clubs this way, I suppose the river would be a jam. I mean, I three bet bluffed ace king against a check raise on Hustler Casino Live a couple, a uh, couple, couple weeks ago. It did not work. I wish I had been a little bit deeper. Uh, and then what would what else? Would Mig sing nine nine? I don't know, man. I, I my gut is that I would probably overfold here a little bit, but it is certainly bizarre. You're getting what seventy eight hundred for thirty six hundred. Let, t- let me ask you this question about this game that it goes once a week. Do you is there a lot of like big time like bluffs? Are there is there a lot of bluffing that goes on in this game? You know, as well. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't see it get shown down very often. I've seen one particular player make the most bluffs, and that was not this player. This player I've only seen all in one time before, and it was for a smaller amount. Uh, I'd have to have like a lot of respect for this guy to even to probably consider like possibly calling. And what I mean by that is, is that I'd have to have, I'd have to think that his game was at a high enough level where he's somehow finding the bluffs that he should find here, or he's capable of putting this amount of money in as a bluff. Cause the whole thing is kind of strange, right? It's somewhat non-standard. Like, it's not like he, he went bet, bet, bet all in and, oh, now you're facing a triple barrel. He checked back the flop and then he raised the turn. How often do you see that on a board like this in a four bet pot where the ranges should be pretty condensed? I can't remember the last time I've seen it. So it's hard to like look back and think like, what is, what is this necessarily? So a lot of times you might just sort of default to being like, wow, this guy's putting a lot of money here into the pot. I am losing to certain hands that might make some sense. And it's a pretty non-intuitive bluff that is not anywhere near common, if ever seen, with something like ace-king with the ace of clubs or something like that. So, I mean, I, I, I might lay it down here. I, I mean, I think I probably would fold. Again, I mean, you do have the, the queen of clubs in your hand. I don't know what came in. What was your thought process here at the end? I was thinking that if he was making a bluff with, like, I thought about the, uh, the aces checking back the flop with the ace of clubs, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. going for the, like... A bluff with this flush coming in, but also value because I still lose to aces here. Mm-hmm. And then also possibility of ace five, mm-hmm. uh, two fives on the board. Those are the main things I was concerned about. So what did you end up doing? I folded. Did you get a reveal? I did not. Later, like 30 minutes later, I asked him if he had a flush uh, and he told me, uh, you know, ace king of clubs, only one combination. Uh, <laughs> what about aces and kings? Which makes me think he had uh, a good hand. So he said what? He said... He, he did not say, but oh, yeah. he, he mentioned that, you know, oh, flush is only like one, one combination of hands. Oh, man. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, sort of, it, you know, it, you always sort of walk away. I don't know if you just played this hand or it was recently. It just came... Is this like in the last few days or something? This was, this was last week's game. Last week's game. Yeah, I mean, you always, you know, start thinking about, oh, well, I got there, you know, on the river. Should I have called? But again, that's just a very, very sort of unseen line uh, of checking back flop, raising turn, and then jamming river. Yeah, it's just, he'd have to find that bluff. I mean, the only thing, I mean, the thing that I would, again, you know, go back to is just the little thing pre-flop. And I'm not saying that this makes this a call. It's just that he sh- he is slightly wider with a four bet because of the fact that those other guys um, are behind him. And I mean, at that point, though, if he also too, if he has ace five, 
and he raised, if he didn't bet ace five on the flop and then he raised turn and the river was a club, like he only has one pot size bet left. I mean, that's a value bet all in all day, right? I mean, you're not scared right. of flush. It's like one, one SPR. It's insane. So I think you lose to a lot of hands here. So I think I probably would have made the same decision. But thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it.